Hi, today we're going to talk about data cleansing. Data cleansing has got to be one of the most important parts of any kind of data analytics project. A lot of times people focus on collecting data, and after they've collected it, or maybe downloaded it from another source, then they typically go right forward to analyze the data. However, it's important to take a look at the data to know if there's any um, variables that have missing values or any kind of other errors that might be within that data. So missing data happens quite a bit. Um, it happens uh, naturally. I mean, that's a key point. Um, the reason why it happens naturally is because we have people that collect data and they might put the information in incorrectly. They may uh, write it down incorrectly. They may punch a key, the incorrect key when they input the data. Um, that's why typically when we're looking at data collection, sometimes we try to get machines to do the work instead of humans to improve our, um, our, our accuracy and precision with data collection. But they occur for different reasons. Um, and so one of the things to be aware of is what we do with them. Okay. Well, you remember our data sets are a combination of in a table, you know, we have a table and we have a variable. And uh, so we have variable one, we have variable two, we have variable three, whatever it might be. And we're collecting data throughout this time. And every time that we collect this data, each one of these is an observation. Like imagine this was day, temperature, and then the pressure uh, of that day, the atmospheric pressure. But let's say that one day we are unable to measure that atmospheric pressure. So what do we do? So one of the options that we have is to just get rid of that row altogether. And that is uh, deletion of that row. Now, another option might be to just delete that column, not use that column at all in our analysis. So then this would be discard that whole variable. And the final option, of course, is to look for uh, some kind of other way to fill in that value. So we might do like a, an average. So that is something that we can do. We can fill in the missing value with an estimated value. And we must do this with any kind of missing data um, so that way our data mining algorithms work. Now, there's various reasons why um, there's missing values. Um, and, it, and it ranges in so many different ways. But um, what we're dealing with is that it could be completely at random, simply at random, or not random at all. And it really depends on really the system that's used to collect the data um, and whether there's dependency on other values. Uh, so, for example, if it's completely at random, um, it doesn't matter if there's other values missing in the data set. Um, and so therefore, uh, it, it might be, it might help us with um, figure out what we're going to do. Something like this, you can probably go ahead and use the average. Um, but then also, there might be uh, another scenario where it's missing at random, but it's related to the value of some other variable in the data. So like, so for example, uh, on the temperature reading, it might get below zero, and when it's below zero, then the uh, pressure gauge is doesn't read the pressure. Well, it's still at random because we don't know when the temperature is going to go below zero, but we do know that when it does, that's when that other the te the pressure reading is um, is missing, and then not at random at all. Um, so basically, we know that um, there is an occurrence, and it's completely predictable. Um, and kind of going back to the zero degree example from before, uh, let's say that before, sometimes it would occur when it's below zero. Other times, it's every single time it occurs when it's below zero, and that would be not at random at all. Okay. And so what do we do with, with that kind of thing? Well, what we do is we do some level of imputation. And that's replaced the missing value with something that will help us conduct our analysis. Okay. 
So um, we have an example here. It's Blakely Tires. They're a tire company. And what they do is they collect data on tires um, where there's known issues. And so we have a, a sample data set. And let me introduce that data set first. And then we'll um, probably pause and start a new video as we start to kind of analyze it. So here's our data set. It's in these uh, five columns here in this Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to look specifically at these three numerical values. The reason why we're looking at the numerical values is they're easier to use statistics in order to be able to impute the data. However, if you look at position on the automobile, there's no way that we can impute the data if it's missing. Uh, the only thing that we could hope for is that maybe there's a, a value here like RRR that would be an error and that might be something we're going to correct. But we're going to look at values that are numerical so that way we can more or less estimate what we might have for replacements. So one of the first things that we can do is look for um, point blank missing values. Now there's more than one way of, of looking up missing values, right? Um, you can always use a count. You can count all of these and see where they match and if there's a mis mismatch that might give you some clue. Um, Excel gives us this formula, it's called count blank. I'm not a big fan of this formula, but it works in this case. You use the count blank formula and you go ahead and input the range of data um, and it tells you how many of the cells were blank. And I could copy this over from left to right. And you can see that I have uh, some issues on the miles. There's one value that's missing. So, um, I'm going to come down over here on column E, which is the miles. I'm going to select on the header of this column. I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm on a PC. If you're a Mac user, it might be command. And then hit the down, while I'm holding down the control uh, button, hit the down arrow on my cursor keypad, which is usually to the right hand side of your keyboard. And what this does in Excel, it brings you down to the last value before the first blank. So you can see that here is that missing value, right? So I know for certain that that value is there. By the way, if I did that same routine, held down my control button and press the down arrow and do that multiple times, I can see how it brings me through the data set. All right. What do I do with this missing value? Well, one thing to do is to calculate the mean or the average. I'm going to go ahead and type average select this range here for um, life of tires and do the same for all of them. Notice that miles has got this hashtag uh, type of look and that's because I have too many decimals. So I'm going to decrease the decimals. So here's a value. I'm going to impute the missing with uh, the number 25,440. So I'm going to come back here, look for that missing value and put 25,440. Now, when I come back up to the top, you can see that I no longer have that missing value. Okay. So we're going to look at some other things like for outliers and, and whatnot. And so um, let's go back to this um, discussion here. So the PowerPoint that's available to you in As You Learn has um, a small technique. It looks at, of course, this missing value that we just highlighted right here. And um, then uh, they identify um, that where that missing value is. They actually do this by conducting a sort. Obviously, I gave you a different technique in order to be able to, to find that missing value. Right? And then we went ahead and put the average in. So the next thing we're going to look for is identifying the erroneous outliers and other types of er erroneous values. So we're going to pick up right here on the next video. So just stay tuned.